One last thing I want to do in the UI before we actually continue adding the other functions that we need. So the functions to add a new server, filter the servers and delete a server. I want to add the air and the UI as well. So remember, if we go back inside of the application state, we know there is a scenario where we can get an error, so which is going to be a string. So back here, when we subscribe to this observable, we know that whenever we get an error, which is going to go inside of this block, then the error message is going to be in here, which is going to be a string. So off of the application state, we'll have an error property as you can see here. So this is the interface that we're using. So application state, it will have an error property, which is going to be a string. So we can capture this as well. And whenever there is an error, we can show this string to the user, which is being captured as well in our service. So if I go inside of the service, we're catching it right down there. And we're just showing this generic message for whatever error that occurs with this status. So I'm going to go back inside of the UI and scroll down. So here we're showing this error, which is just hard coded. So we can turn this into the actual error that we're getting from the backend or we're just getting in general. So I'm going to put double curly braces, access the application state. So I'm going to do app state that error because we know that property is going to exist. So if there's an error, then this UI or this container is going to show and it's going to have this little message in there, as you can see here. So that's going to be our string error. So if we go back to the UI, we shouldn't see any changes because there's no error, but I can simulate an error and then I can show you what that looks like. So let's go back to the back end and I'm going to minimize this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is to just make this throw an exception after three seconds. So I'm going to go down here, go down and then I'm going to say throw and let's make this throw a runtime exception. So I'm going to say runtime exception and then pass in a message here. I'm going to say something went wrong and put a semicolon here and we need to just commit out all this code. This is supposed to be new. So we're going to throw a new runtime exception or we can even throw this exception since we already have it here. And I don't know if this exception takes a message in the constructor, but we'll see. All right, so we get no errors. So this constructor, it actually takes a message, so we get no errors. So we can run the application, and then after three seconds, it's going to give us an error, which is going to be the string. We're not really capturing this in anything, and I can show you how we can capture this. So let's go ahead and rerun this, and we're going to test this out. All right, so the application is running, as you can see here. So let's go back to the UI and refresh and wait. You're going to see an error occur and then we get 500. So we get the UI piece where there is an error. So if you want to capture the error message, so let's see if we can inspect this a little bit. So if I go in here, right, and I go into the console and I have this HTTP error response. So that's from Angular. This is the object that they use to capture HTTP error response and you can extend this. And if I go inside of this, so if I extend this a little bit, you can see that we have this error here and we can capture this information as well. We can look at the message. If I extend this a little bit more and then we get a 500. OK, so that's bad because 500 is an error. So you can grab whatever you want from this error message. But if you want to capture the error that we set up in the back end like this, something went wrong. So let's go back to the back end. So if you actually want to capture this, then you need to do exception handling. And this is something that I'm not covering in this course, but this is extremely important when you're building an API because you want to be able to capture all of your exception and then return something to the user, like something that the user can understand. They can see, okay, this is the error that occurs. Let me see how I can fix it. And this is something that we can do as well. And you should do it whenever you're building your API. But in this particular case, I'm just not doing the exception handling, but it's super, super important. You can see that we have the exception that happens here. So interrupted exception and here's the message. Something went wrong. But I just wanted to show you that if we have an error, then the error is going to come up here and you will see that we have the UI piece that represents the error. So let's go back to the back end and I'm going to just undo all of this because we don't need to send this error and going to remove this line as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the application. So run, stop and rerun. All right. So everything looks good. If we go back again and refresh, we're in loading state and we get our data. All right, so everything looks good. So in the next videos, we're gonna be working on the other functions that we need to, you know, filter everything, add a new server, and then print the report, and also to be able to ping a server.